You know, brothers and sisters, the Christians are against the precepts. They say that's not the way to learn the Bible. The way to learn the Bible is by theology. Let's open up the books of the past of the slave master, of course, and see what he thinks. <laughs> okay. Now you understand what I think. Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Ah, so those that are weaned from the milk. Well, brothers and sisters, let's find out what the milk is. It takes precepts to do that. Let's go to Peter. 1 Peter 2 and 2. Now, I chose this for a reason. Simple as that. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Ah, so the milk is the word is the word that ye may grow thereby. So it says the milk of the word. Well, what's the word? See, this is how I teach you. Because in order for you to understand how you're going to grow, you got to know what the word is. So when we turn the page, remember now, we turn the page. Psalms 119, verse 172. My tongue shall speak of thy word. See, he's going to tell us what the word is. For all thy commandments are righteousness. See, the word of God is the commandments. And that's how you grow. That's how you grow. The Christians, no. If you're looking for the Christians to teach you like this, no. They're trying to hide the verses because they can't deal with them all. He didn't teach them how. Come on, let's go to verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Now I want you to notice. It says line upon line. Why? Let's, I want to go here. I wasn't planning to go here, but I want you to see this. Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And that's what they're not doing. Not like this. Something you got to pray for when you love your people. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth hath commanded. And what? His spirit hath gathered them. Ah, so his spirit has gathered them. Pay attention. And he hath cast them, excuse me, and he hath cast the lots for them. Talking about uh, the book, the Bible now. And his hand has divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. See, God is given these things to us by line, one line at a time. So we have to read one line at a time to get the understanding, not the whole chapter. See, the Christians divert you from what you need to know by reading the whole chapter to no point at all. They're not quoting the whole chapter when they quote their verses. It's hypocrisy. So when we go back, when we go back, again, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Now, what's interesting is, brothers and sisters, when I turn the page back to Psalms 119, verse 15, I want you to pay attention. David writes this. I will meditate in thy precepts, ah, precepts, and have respect unto thy ways, ah. I will meditate. And that's what we do. We meditate on every precept we can and read it to you because we're not trying to hide nothing. So what happens is, let's go up to verse 4. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Ah, so in diligence, we keep the law because that's what the precepts are, the law. Right? So again, I want to turn the page because I want you to pay attention. The book, let me, let me go back. Let me, I'm sorry, let me go back. Psalms 119, verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I kept thy precepts. See, brothers and sisters, David says, I understand any, all things that were before me. Any man that knew, I understand more than the ancients because I kept thy precepts. I meditated on thy laws. That's what the precepts are. 
See, watch this, Psalms 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Ah, so to understand the false way, you have to know the precepts. And that's why the Christians are trying to push that thought out of your head. As we keep knocking them upside the head with these precepts, there's nothing they can do. There's no respect to persons here, brothers and sisters. That's a sin. Look at what's read to you. In order for us to understand Easter, Christmas, Sunday, Baby Day, Dog Day, Cat Day, Pillow Day, whatever day, when we read these precepts, we don't see those worships in the Bible, but 80% of the people around the world that believe in Christ believe in him aside the Bible. Again, I want to turn the page. Psalms 119, verse 128. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. See, if you're going to know if all things are right, it's going to be by the precepts and hate every false way. David writes it again. So when you know the precepts, you understand the false way. Since the Christians like to avoid the precepts, they're not going to understand nothing. A lot of our people are doomed. It's not about you, bro. We don't want to hear you. Just read. So when we go back to Isaiah, Isaiah 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear, is, the fear toward me, is taught by the okay. precepts of men. So look at that. So the fear is taught by the Sunday pastor. The precepts of men. That is what the Christian church is about. The few little scriptures they present, they present to those that don't know anything. When I go into this, brothers and sisters, I'm going to flatten them out. There's nothing they can do. There's no challenge here. The precepts of men is what we're trying to bring our people out of. Like for this instant, brother, so I want to take you to something. I like it. Now, we're going to Paul. Now, I choose this because it's quick and easy, but the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 24. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now, he's going to show you who these Gentiles are. As he saith also in Hosea. Now, Reading this is pointless unless you understand who Hosea is. Hosea is Hosea, the prophet. Why is Paul quoting two scriptures? Now, verse 25, he's quoting Hosea 2.23. Verse 26, he's quoting Hosea 1, verse 10. Why is Paul quoting precepts from the Old Testament concerning his teaching of the Gentiles? Because Paul taught the precepts of the Old Testament. Let's drop down to verse 27. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Why is he quoting Isaiah 10, 21, 22? Why is Paul quoting precepts out of the Bible? You know, I heard a boy, I heard somebody on the live say Paul did not bring the Old Testament books to Israel in the New Testament. You see, brothers and sisters, that, that, that's the simplest, and it's an act. These men on these uh, lives, brothers and sisters, these TikTok lives are phonies. If you have a TikTok live, you're going to teach with the scriptures like I do. We ain't worried about me. We ain't worried about my face. We ain't worried about no fancy backgrounds. Scripture. Scripture. That's why Peter said, and that's why, brothers and sisters, we can't listen. Oh, it's more than Paul. They act like it's just Paul that taught. No, there was also Peter. The book of Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability of which God giveth. Wait a minute. It says, if any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. The oracles of God are the laws. So Peter says, if any man speak, you're supposed to be teaching the law. 
you phony preachers.